So given the dramatic impacts a brain injury can have on a person's life and the long-standing permanent impacts they can have, it's important for all of us to think about brain injury prevention. Uh, most often we see, at least my firm sees, brain injury as a, re as a result of automobile accidents. So if you think about it in the context of how to prevent a brain injury in an automobile accident, you can reduce your speed, certainly use seat belts, uh, drive in a car that's, that's newer, that has airbags. As we see here, uh, place your children in car seats that have adequate head protection. Uh, this is a great car seat. In fact, it's the same one that I use for my own daughter. And you can see the additional head protection up there, and that's very important, particularly on a side-to-side -side impact, to keep the child's head and neck um, safe from brain injury or neck injury. In addition to that, you know, motorcyclists should always wear motorcycle helmets, both uh, dirt biking and, and road biking. Uh, if you're thinking about sports, mo uh, uh, football helmets are key. Uh, football helmets have come a long way since I played football in college, and, and uh, they're much safer than they used to be. Bicycle helmets in particular, uh, especially children. Um, you have uh, snow, snowboarding, snowmobiling, uh, skiing, all, they're all helmet related. So in, any sport that realistically you may hit your head on, if there's a helmet out there that's available for that sport, you should probably wear it or at least have your children wear it if they're participating in those sports. Around the home, you can think about other ways uh, to protect yourself as well, uh, particularly with stairs. That's where we see most head, in head injuries at the, at the house. So think about uh, handrails. Make sure the carpets are, aren't loose at the top or bottom of stairs. Be sure the carpeting of the stairs itself are tightened periodically so you don't have loose carpeting that's going to cause uh, a family member to trip and fall down the stairway. Outside, uh, it, both in your, in your yard and at the playground, uh, if you're going to let your kids uh, play outside on playgrounds, be sure that there's, uh, there's safety material uh, along the bottom of the play structures themselves. It can be bark. I've seen it uh, rubber material, uh, both chopped up as well as laid. Uh, but some sort of material as opposed to concrete or rocks where if the child were to fall, it would protect his or her head from, uh, from injury uh, as a result of the soft substance on the bottom. You can do this yourself at the house. I've done it with bark at my house. Uh, or you can do it, uh, or, or you can simply take your child to a park that has such safety features. And then, of course, uh, we should all be on the lookout for, uh, for child abuse. You know, we've heard shaken baby syndrome, and that, that's, really, that's a brain injury. Uh, any any uh, adults that would hit a child, uh, particularly in the head, that's asking for brain injury. So anytime we suspect there might be abuse of a child, uh, it's always smart to call the proper authorities to be sure that that child's protected because, well, we may want to turn a different cheek or turn another cheek and look away, um, particularly if there's someone we know Ultimately, that can have long-standing effects on the child, both psychologically as well as, as uh, just physically with the brain becoming injured from abuse. So definitely call the police uh, should you suspect any child abuse occurring. And then finally, just dietary, there's been uh, studies out there that, that would suggest that omega-3 supplementation will actually help prevent um, long-term, long long-standing damage to the brain should you ever become unfortunate enough to be brain injured. So supplement with, with omega-3, it's not just good for the brain, it's good for the joints as well. And uh, just do what you can to prevent uh, one of the worst injuries you can possibly suffer.